Hey everybody, this is Tony with TBD Designs and I'm finally getting around to making this video I promised you on how to use the sock jigs and I'm also going to show you how to set up your artwork program to print on those uh, sock jigs or the socks that you're using the jigs for and as a bonus I'm going to show you how to use a single sheet of 13 by 19 paper if that's the size you're using um, and cover the entire sock because um, as you'll see the sock is bigger than 19 inches so I'm going to break this whole process up into a couple of videos so I don't have to jump between the camcorder and the desktop so on um, this first video would just be what you do on your computer setting up your artwork and printing everything out okay so this picture here is a picture of the jigs with the socks loaded and I've got my ruler and tape set up so you can see the dimensions so from the edge of one sock to the other is about, let's call it 9 inches. And from the toe to the top is about 19 and a half. I like to round off to, you know, the good measurement. Now what I'm going to do is set up an image that goes across the entire front. And uh, also the back. But for this um, setup, I'm just going to show the, how you set up the front. So the first thing I want to do, um, you start a new document. And... You want to set your workspace up large enough to fit the item that you're going to sub on. So I set mine up for 12 inches wide by 22 inches tall. So that will cover the area we want to sub on. We're going to eventually change this to the size of our paper we're working with. But I'm going to show you um, the different steps. And we'll get to that point. Alright, cool. So now we got our workspace set up to fit everything. We want to create a rectangle that's going to represent the entire image that we want to print on. So um, we're going to add a half an inch, that's all I like to add, it, a half an inch to the actual size, which would allow a quarter of an inch on each side of your garment or your print area for bleeding. So you can make sure the entire image you want is captured on the actual garment. So I'm going to choose, oops, sorry, for this eight. So let's call this 9 by 19 and a half. That'll make it 9 and a half by 20. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool here. I'm just going to drag it out. And make sure that your aspect ratio is unlocked. So you just put your dimensions in 9 and a half by 20. Hit enter. And then the Coral Draw shortcut is if you hit P, it centers it on the page. And I also want to get rid of that blue fill, so I just left click transparent color. Okay, and I'm going to right click here, my um, layer one, and rename that so I know what it is. I'm going to rename that bleed area. This helps you keep track of what's going on and what you're clicking on, things like that. All right, so we got that um, created. That represents the size of the image we want to print. That's going to cover both socks. So now we actually import the image we want to use. Now um, make sure you're choosing the image that's kind of proportional or um, shape similar. So we want a taller image or you have to end up chopping your image up. So I have an image in mind so I go to file, import, and I'm going to use this image here because it's tall. It's taller than it is wide. And you also want to use a high resolution um, picture. So you can actually just hit enter or what I like to do is just drag it to make sure it's going to fit that bleed area. So right now I'm over the top of the bleed area. So um, you can hit P to center it. And another trick that you, um, you can use to send it to the back of your workspace so you can actually see the bleed area. You can either drag it to the back so you can see that. Um, the bleed area on top, or you can hit Control and N, and that'll send it to the back. All right, cool. So now we got the image in. So now we want to right-click that image and select Power Clip inside, and then select inside that bleed area rectangle. So now it's basically cut and sized to fit the bleed area that we're going to print out, and you don't have a lot of wasted ink in there. Alright, so next we want to do is uh, 
if this wasn't where you wanted it to be, the image, you can actually uh, expand the bleed area and group and click on that image and like move it around to where you want it to go. Um, so if we like it right about there, so I just hit P again to kind of center it. Okay. So now what you want to do is create rectangles or to represent your pages that you're going to use to print out. And I like to create mine about a half an inch less the, um, than the dimension of my paper in both directions. So if I'm using 12, 13 by 19 paper, my rectangles are going to be 12 and a half by 18 and a half. So again, I just click the rectangle tool, drag, and I make that 12 and a half inches wide. 18 and a half inches tall. Get rid of the fill. I'm going to right click that and rename that page one. And I'm going to give it a different color. So I'm going to right click it and give it a red outline. And I'm going to hit P to center it. So that's the first page, but we know, see right now it's in the middle of our printout. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it up. To where it covers, I have to go a little bit further, but I'm gonna make sure it's captured on the, uh, the my printer can capture that. All right, cool. So I see the page is covering the entire top of the image of the image. That's good to go. So I select it. I want to copy that page one with Control C. I want to paste it with Control V. And I'm gonna choose the bottom one because what it did it just pasted it right on top of it though. So I like to have page one up top, page two will be in the bottom. So I can left click it, then right click it and rename it. Page, page two, the top. page two, hit enter. And then I'm going to right click it and I'm going to make this one blue. Alright, so now take your page two, click it and it's out. Uh, So it's basically covering the bottom of the image. Alright. So now this um to make sure your pages are centered, just select both page one. You can hold control and uh, select page two and then go to align and distribute. Make sure you're relative to your page edge and click that align center horizontally. Okay, back to the object layer. So now your pages are centered. You see page one is the top, page two be the bottom. But you see we don't need to paint, I mean, uh, print this whole entire area right here on page two because page one is capturing it. So what I'm going to do is select page two. Okay, so you see I, I, it's got it backwards. So page one is the bottom, page two is the top. So um, I don't like that. So I'm going to rename these. It's happening because I'm recording. Things happen when you record. Things happen on page two. I'm gonna drag page two down here. All right, there we go. So what I was getting at is page one is printing from here to here, the blue. So page two only needs to print the bottom portion. But we want to have an overlap. That way, when you're cutting and splicing your um, print out together you, you'll have some area for tr you know for error actually so I like to overlap between a third and a half of an inch so what I'm going to do I'm going to choose the third or 0 0.3 so select my rectangle tool I draw a rectangle and I'm going to make it 0 0.3 inches in both dimensions alright so I'm going to select it and I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom of page one. So let's zoom in a little bit. Alright, cool. Alright, so you just click it and you just get it close. It doesn't be perfect. But right now I have it basically represent 0 0.3 inches from the bottom of page one. So now what I want to do is I'm going to resize my page two. Because this page isn't going to be the actual paper size, it's just the print size of um, the portion of the image. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I scroll back up, 
select page two, and I pull that dimension down. Like I need some more memory on my computer. And I just want to line it up right at the top of that 0 0.3 by 0 0.3 rectangle. Boom. So now I'm a page one. I'm going to zoom back out now. So page one is this blue one, so it goes from here to here. Page two, it goes from here to here with a 0 0.3 inch overlap. So now we can select that overlap rectangle and delete it. We don't need it anymore. All right, cool. So now we got the pages set up. We got the got it overlap. And for socks, we only need two. But if this is like an all-over shirt, you just want to create the number of rectangles to cover the entire shirt and overlap in every dimension. Um, but for socks, we only need it in this one dimension. Okay. So now what we want to do is copy this image. The number of times we have pages. So we have two. So I selected Control C for copy again, and Control V for paste. And it's at the top. I'm going to put it to the bottom. All right. So Control N. So now to the bottom. Okay. So now we want to do select one of them, and we right click it. You want to actually select the whole bleed area when you copy it. Because what that's going to do is um, it's not wasting this area out here that you're not needing to print because the socks are only this wide. So instead of selecting the image here and copying it, you select the bleed image here, copy it, and paste it. How many every time that you have pages? And we only have two, so we need it twice. So again, I take that whole bleed area, control N to get it to the back of the page. Okay, there we go. So at this point, I'm going to take your bleed area and I'm going to make sure there's no fill or no outline. So I just left click transparency and right click it and you'll see the black outline go away and do that for both. Okay, so you saw the black outline go away. Now what you do is you click one of these bleed areas, right click it, select power clip inside, and let's start with page one, which is blue. So you saw your cursor change it to an arrow. Click inside the blue. So now let's clip that side. Now let's click that second bleed area. Right click it. Power clip inside. Page two, anywhere in this red rectangle. So now let's clip. So now you can just to make sure you did it right. You just go select the top one and move it to the bottom one. So you'll see. Page one goes down to this area, and page two picks up there. Now I'll just hit Control Z to get it back where it was, and you see it's overlapped there. All right, so now um, I go to page one, and I want to get rid of the outline, so I right-click into transparency to make sure it doesn't print that. Same thing with page two, right-click. So now we're ready to print. Or we're ready to set the page up to print. So now what you want to do is go up and set your workspace up the same size as your paper. In my case, it's 13 inches wide by 19 inches tall. And you see it won't fit on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just drag them all off so I can actually see the work. I'm going to see the workspace better. I'm going to take page one, I'm going to drag it and get it to where the printable area is on, is on the workspace which represents the sheet. You, want, you don't want to get it too close to the edges because your printer may not be able to print that close. So, I mean, it's selected now and um, I got it about, you know, center. So the trick I want to show you is how to take this and fit it on this same sheet. So 
in Coral Draw, this is how you do it. You just select your second page and go to Transformation. This is like a uh, angle of rotation. Rotate it 90 degrees. Hit Apply. And now just drag it to where it fits. Boom. So now you can print both of these on one piece of paper. And um, like I said, this is the first part. Once I print it, and I'll show you how to cut it and uh, tape it together. And so it's one continuous page now when it comes time to press it. So let's just go to File, Print Preview. So you can see this is my 13 by 19 page setup for my Workforce <laughs> work 7720 sublimation printer. And um, it's going to fit. So that dotted line is the print area. So if it was outside of that dotted line, it wouldn't be able to uh, put ink there. So we're good to go here. Alrighty. So step two or video two is going to be um, taking that print out, cutting it with your cutter or uh, whatever type of uh, scissors, uh, ruler, and razor blade, whatever you have, and then taping it together and then moving on to subbing it on your stocks. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll throw this one up now and um, let you guys know once the second one is done. Subscribe to my page. I'll put more details at the bottom. And let me know what you think. Alright, thanks a lot.